Ladies and gentlemen, so it begins. As a result of a genius military plan of fake surrendering Severodonetsk last week, Ukrainians started to be able to push Russian forces away from the south of the country, which is just another big region of Ukraine which can be completely liberated in the nearest future. What allowed Ukrainians to launch successful counteroffensive in the south? How long until Ukrainians can fully liberate their country? What Russia is trying to do not to lose in this war? And these are the questions that we'll be talking about in today's video. What's up investors, Ruby and people of Reddit, it's the Russian dude and this is your daily update on Russian-Ukrainian war as of Tuesday, June 7th. You can see the main events of the day to my right along with the timestamps. Alright people, this is very important so please pay attention because this day signifies that Ukrainian forces started its counter-offensive in the south of the country. Specifically what I'm talking about is that one of these helicopter attacks that Ukrainian forces did in Kherson region. And the reason why Ukrainian forces started to be be able to counterattack in the south of the country, it is because the number of Russian forces significantly decreased. At this very moment, Russia is relocating the majority of its soldiers to the east of the country, because their main goal at this very moment is to liberate this Luhansk region. And the reason for this massive relocation, it is because of the event that happened previous week. Specifically what I'm talking about is this fake surrender of the city of Severodonetsk by Ukrainian forces. This allowed Russian soldiers to advance further into the city, which then later were trapped by Ukrainian forces. And because of this, Ukrainians started to be able to push Russians away from the city, which forced Russians to call for reinforcements. And that is why they had to decrease the number of soldiers everywhere across Ukraine and put them in the south of Ukraine. Right now, the battle for Severodonetsk is considered to be the most important battle at this very moment in this war. Because in case Ukraine wins this battle, this can potentially mean that the end of this war will be in the nearest future. And the reason for this it is because the only region of Ukraine where Russia has significant presence is exactly the east of the country. So Ukrainians started counterattacking in the region of Kherson. And because of this, Russians had to relocate some of its soldiers from the city of Melitopol to Kherson. Which basically means that now the distance between the south of Ukraine and east of Ukraine for Russians is increasing. And there is even fewer soldiers in between these territories. So what we basically see right now is that even even though Russia is focusing in the east of the country, they are also kinda trying not to lose its positions in the south of Ukraine. It was already hard enough to just control the east of Ukraine and now you have to separate between two different regions. And yes, once again, all this is happening while Ukraine is still waiting for the majority of weapons from the west. And now, according to the defense intelligence of the United Kingdom, Russia is attempting a new strategy how they can capture Severodonetsk. What they basically say is that Russians are now focused focusing on the city of Izum, so that they can put simultaneous pressure on the city of Severodonetsk, not just from the north of the country, but also from the west of the country. But still, let's say so, if they are able to capture the city of Severodonetsk, the further advancement will still be extremely complicated. Because if you remember, the next city is the city of Lysychansk, which is geographically higher than Severodonetsk. And this always creates the disadvantage for the attacking side. So yes, at this very moment, Ukrainians are trying to hold back Severodonetsk as much as they can and are simultaneously fortifying the city of Lysychansk. And if they can hold Russians long enough, eventually they will receive western weapons, which will allow them to launch successful counter-offensive. And by the way, if you like this style of daily news reporting, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, please make sure to check the link in the description if you wish to support Ukraine with us. You'll get additional content such as daily Zoom calls and Q&A sessions and all the proceeds will be donated to Ukraine at the end of each month. Thanks so much and let's continue. Welcome to another episode of Ridiculous Russian Propaganda. And today we have the statement from Maria Zaharova, who is the representative of the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Russia, who says that if there is any single sign that you are Russian who is living in Western countries, you will definitely be physically abused. So what she basically means is that you are speaking Russian in America, people will beat you. If you have Russian flag on one of your clothes somewhere in Canada, people will beat you as well. And these people, they are kind of supposed to be 
with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, which kinda means that they need to know how people live abroad. Because let's take me for example, I have a hockey team in Florida and I have a hockey team in Canada. And not a single person from these hockey teams wishes me death. In fact, it is quite the opposite. These people that are pretty concerned about the well-being about both of my Ukrainian and Russian families. But besides this, some people also always ask whether I'm being discriminated. For which I'm always replying that no, of course I'm not. Today, the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, participated in a video conference organized by the Financial Times. And obviously, the main topic for the conversation was the war with Russia. The main idea behind his speech was that this stalment with Russia Russia is completely unacceptable for Ukraine. He said that he is not planning to extend this war for years. But unfortunately, according to him, at this very time Ukraine is not able to launch too many successful counteroffensive. And the reason for this it is because right now Russia has more advanced weapons and people. And then he proceeds by saying that this is exactly why Ukraine needs these western weapons so much. Because the first and foremost thing he cares about is to save as many any Ukrainian lives as possible. And every day of this war that Ukraine is not able to push Russians away from its territory means that hundreds of Ukrainians are dying. The sooner Ukraine can get Western weapons, the sooner they will be able to launch counteroffensive, the sooner they will win in this war. He then also confirmed that at this very moment the main goal of Ukraine will be to take back all of its territories. Zelensky also said that the victory will be achieved on the battlefield, but the final peace treaty will be achieved through diplomatic means. And he concluded by saying that as always he is ready to meet with Vladimir Putin face to face. And speaking about weapons that Ukraine receives from the West, today the advice to the president of Ukraine Alexei Arestovich mentioned that weapons from America according to Land Lease Act are already arriving. He said that the majority of weapons will be accessible somewhere at the beginning of July, but they are already using some of them on the battlefronts. Which basically means that defending Ukraine for its forces becomes a little bit easier every single day. But once again, as soon as they can get enough offensive weapons, this is when massive scale counterattacks will launch across entire territory of Ukraine. Today, the ex-president of Russia, Dmitry Medvedev, did an extremely controversial post in his Telegram. He was basically answering the rhetorical question why his Telegram posts are so aggressive. And his response was that he hates people from the West. He proceeds by calling them various very bad names and he says that they wish death to Russia. And for as long as he is alive, he will do everything possible to make them disappear. And basically, yes, that's the literal translation of his Telegram post. And I mean, I guess it's no wonder that people hate him because of the post like this that he's constantly making. Today, the Russian infiltrator in Kherson region, Kirill Stremausov, mentioned that the region is preparing to do a referendum. This referendum will be basically about whether they want to join Russia or not. And just as a reminder, previously the press secretary of Russia, Dmitry Peskov, mentioned that at this very moment referendums on the territory of Ukraine are not possible. He explained it by saying that the reason why they are not impossible it is because there are military actions happening right now. But as soon as the war is over, they will be more than happy to accept basically entire Ukraine. But nevertheless, Kirill Stremausov said that the region is preparing for referendum. And I guess the reason why he said it is because Ukraine is launching so many counter around Kherson region at this very moment, that is why they want to do this referendum as soon as possible before it's too late for them. Because obviously as soon as Ukraine takes back the Kherson region, this guy Kirill Stremausov will definitely be taken down. But then guess what, the infiltrator of Russian Militopol Galina Danilchenko also mentioned that the region is getting ready to do a referendum. All these people who are saying about these referendums are people from Russia. And the reason why frequency of referendum announcements increased it is because Russia feels like that they're kinda going to lose soon. In the month of May, Russia exported two times more wheat than it usually does, and I only can guess why. In the month of May 2021, Russia has exported 600,000 and 75,000 tons of wheat, and this May the export was 1,260,000 tons. And this is also taken into consideration that the Russia is a little bit sanctioned, which kinda leaves no more doubt that Russia is 
stealing wheat from Ukraine and sells it. If you remember, approximately in the previous month, I was talking about that at this very moment, there is this invisible military mobilization happening in Russia. What it means that at this very moment, Russia does not have enough soldiers to continue advancing in Ukraine. And at the same time, there are not too many volunteers who want to go to the army. So because of this, there are several reports about this so-called invisible mobilization, which basically means that men were receiving these invitations that you have to go to this military enlistment office. And obviously, as soon as you are inside of this office, there is unfortunately no way back. What's even more, in Russia, it is illegal to hide from the enlistment process. So if you are already being officially summoned, it's either you go to the army or you go to jail. And so recently, once again, this invisible mobilization proved that it is kinda real. Several men from Kurskaya Oblast in Russia received these documents, which basically was summoning them to clarify some details. And whenever these men were going to this military enlistment office, they were being asked, what's your name and what's your address? And after they confirmed their personal information, they were offered to sign the military contract, which as you can guess, majority if not all of them refused to do so. But in return, the military representatives warned them that in case they're in mobilization, now they have their full information on these people, which basically means that they will be summoned among the first ones and it will be illegal for them to hide from the mobilization. Today there has been a vote in the British Parliament about whether Boris Johnson, the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom, should resign or not. 59% voted against his resignation, while 41% supported the resignation. And the response of Boris Johnson for this vote was that now it's not the time to focus on our internal problems. He basically said that at this very moment the United Kingdom must unite to help Ukraine. Thank you so much for your attention, check the link in the description, stay safe and see you tomorrow.